we'll look into the next topic which is about rima so far you have studied about drilling you know that when you are doing the drilling in the process of drilling there will be some metal chips that will be all around this inner diameter of the hole that means it won't be finished and we need to finish this hole to clear it of all the metal chips that are protruding so that means what we require is some precision some degree of precision in the hole that we drilled out and this is achieved by the use of rima so rima is basically used to ensure that the hole that we have drilled is precise free of any metal chips free of any rough edges <coughs> like how we had while studying the drill we have studied that the drill bits are made up of many different type of material that implies that even the rima would also be made of different type of materials so what is the main purpose of rima it is used for finishing job to finish the hole it is a precision tool because it is used to make the hole precise it can also be used to enlarge the hole and they are made up of carbon steel or alloy steel now how while we studied about drill we have seen that the drill bit or the drilling you can carry out by hand hand drilling or by the use of pneumatic pressure or by the use of electric in case of rima also you have got different modes of operation one of the mode of operation is hand operated and other is by using the drilling machine now you can fit this rima to the drill chuck and let it clean off those unwanted the uh, no metal chips and make it smoother okay put it inside the drill chuck and then allow it to rotate in that drill hole okay so how do we identify whether the rima can be used by hand or by use of the machine so machine reamers are identified by the mores tapered shank so the shank would be tapered and what is the purpose of tapered shank it is to ensure that the reamer can be attached to the drill spindle so the machine reaming is done by specialized person the machinist and while you will be working your job will be restricted to hand held rima so we will restrict or this book it restrict itself to the hand operated rima so hand rima are rotated by means of hand wrench which locates on this square portion of the shank they must always be rotated only in the cutting direction it is very essential that we always rotate in the cutting direction because we want to apply stress in only one direction now as the drill bit need to be protected 
The same goes with the reamer, so you need to protect the reamer as well. In case of drill bit, we need to use lubricants. And that implies even with a reamer, we need to use the lubricant. There is no difference. The same type of lubricant that we will be using with that drill bit, the exactly same type of lubricants we will be using with reamer. The common type of hand operated reamer are the hand parallel reamer, hand expanding reamer and hand tapper reamer. So we will look into each of these. As the name suggests parallel, that means the body will be parallel, as simple as that. Expanding, something is expanding. Now how the thing could expand? Probably you know, could be having some sort of a spring action where the spring is forcing the thing to move out. Maybe if I require some sort of a mechanism where the whole diameter, you know, the size of that can be adjustable, then probably we need to use this expanding type. And then the tapered, as the name suggests, it won't be parallel, it will be tapered. So we'll just go by the name, parallel, expanding and tapered. In case of a drill bit, we have seen flutes and some goes with room, uh, Rima. In Rima also, we'll have the flutes. We have seen while studying the drill bit that the flutes are spiral. Here also the flutes can be spiral. And in fact, in Rima, the flutes can even be parallel. So whenever we talk about parallel Rima, what exactly it means that the entire body will be parallel. Whenever I say anything about tapper, that means the body will be tapered. Whenever I say anything about expanding, that means the body will probably be expanding. In terms of uh, the, the parallel, again we have got two types depending on the amount of, or sorry, depending on the type of the flutes. Either we can have straight or we can have helical spiral. So you need to remember this, what is the purpose of the straight flute reamer and spiral fluted reamer. So straight fluted reamer for general purpose work and spiral fluted reamer is used for holes in the QAs and the grooves. It bridge the edge of the gap. Bridges the edges of the gap means what exactly it means. So you have got the hole, then if it is spiral, the engagement with the inside portion, inside wall of the hole will be more compared to the straight foot. So that is for providing better grip. Next is hand expanding reamer. Expanding the rim, as the name suggests, will expand. So that means in order to adjust to the size of the hole, why we are going to use the rim, we can adjust it as per that. And for that we are having this uh, expanding type of rim. Now if you look at the diagram, you can see here, these are the blades. Can you see the blades? One bead, the other portion is not visible. And if you try to look at you know, the other portion, you will find that the gap between these two bits is tapered. And the blade is attached here. Okay? Are you getting me?
whatever I can. So you can see here at either end you will have two nuts. So you can adjust by tightening and slacking the nut. Okay. The cutting edge is always parallel to the axis of the reamer. So quite natural this is the cutting blade edge and so this is the cutting blade edge and this one is the axis and quite natural both of them are parallel. And checking the size using micrometer or vernier caliper. <coughs> the size will be in metric as well as in imperial unit. <coughs> the size will be in metric as well as in imperial units. And if it is tapered, now we are referring to the tapered condition, the size can either be in metric or it will be in imperial units and the taper ratio will be different in either case. If it is metric, in that case the taper ratio is 1 is to 50, if it is imperial, in that case the tapered ratio is 1 is to 45 or 48. So you need to remember this, taper ratio in each of this. If it is metric, what is the taper ratio? And if it is imperial, what is the taper ratio? They are not compatible because it is a precision device. Because it is a precision device. And both are having different taper ratios. So quite natural, they are not compatible. So they are not compatible. You need to remember this. Next, we will look into Guys and taps. Now, while we have seen that, in case of a bolt or a screw, you will have the threads that are cut, isn't it? Right? In case of a nut, the threads are cut internally, right? Right? Yes or no? So you have got external thread and internal thread. So what uh, tool we use to get these threads cutting done? So that is being done by the use of tap and die. So quite natural you can See, it is used for cutting the internal threads. This is external thread in case of the bolt, and this one is internal thread. So, if I need to cut internal threads, we need to use the tape. Now, do you really think it is easy to cut threads? If I need to cut threads internally in a hole, how much force you need to apply to get this thread uh, cutting done? A lot of force, isn't it? If I need to cut a thread in a iron, do you think it is that easy? But sometimes you need to cut with your hand. Turn, twist, turn, twist, turn, twist. Keep on doing it and then finally you will get the cut. So taps is a hand cutting tool for internal threads. Maximum diameter 1 inch and they are also fluted similar to drill or reamer. It also has shank similar to drill and reamer and the shank is square in shape to attach the shank to a wrench the wrench will be something like this 
so we have got three different types stepper tape as the name suggests stepper then the second is second tape and the third is plug tape the tapper tape is used to start the threading process it is tapered gradually this is tapper if i need to start up something quite natural i if something is blunt the force that i would require will be more compared to anything which is sharp isn't it so by giving a slight tapered shape we are making our starting easier right so we'll start off with the tapper it is tapered gradually from the point to about 2/3 of its threaded length remember till what point it is tapered so that it can enter the pre drill hole easily and the tapering is also done to ensure that the alignment is proper and the last one third is fully thread full thread so you can see here a tapper tape having a gradual tapper portion in one th two third of its length and then full thread in the remaining one third okay next is the second or the intermediate tap whatever cut we did with the tapper tap if that need to be deepened in that case we use the second tap or the intermediate tap it is tapered in the initial two or three threads and after that it is straight then the plug or the bottoming tap it is no tapper complete straight the last bit of cutting and final cutting will be done by the plug tap okay so it is used to cut holes through to the bottom of the blind holes any doubt so far before the thread can be cut the hole definitely need to be finished drill reaming everything should be done the hole must be of the correct size and the drill that is selected must have the same diameter as the minor diameter of the thread needed to be cut very much important remember this this hole must be of the same size and then the drill is selected and it must have the same diameter as the minor diameter of the thread needed to be cut if they are used to cut the threads that means definitely it is very hard isn't it 
correct so if it is very hard quite natural it is brittle as well yes or no so use great care to ensure that it is not damaged so because it is hard and brittle and there is a possibility that it might break so it is quite possible that while you are cutting the thread you have brought the hole and then you are trying to cut the thread with the cap inside and then suddenly it breaks now what? and it got stuck possible isn't it? quite possible, very normal so now what? so we require something to extract it isn't it? So we need to have one more tool to extract this thing. Because it is hard, it is brittle and it is used for cutting action, the cut, uh, for cutting the threads. So it would get heated up because of friction and you need to cool it down. So you need to apply the cooling fluid or the cutting fluid. Even unless you hold the workpiece properly, you cannot do the cutting, isn't it? Thread cutting. So it must be held properly, gripped properly. Is the, if the alignment is not correct, that means the force applied is not uniform. And if the force applied is not uniform and the material being hard and brittle, definitely it will break down. So you need to ensure that it is aligned properly. And how to check its alignment? And that is done by the use of the engineer square. Back don't turn only in one direction because it will get jammed. So like this, 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 this. Okay. To this end, the tap after each turn is rotated backward approximately half to three-fourth turn the forward rotation is then continued with subsequent cutting breaks after the preliminary cut the process is repeated using the second tap and if required repeated again using the plug tap that the, the portion which are being cut the metal which is being removed must be cleaned out if burst or swarf so what exactly burst or swarf means if this is the hole drill hole if these edges are rough so you can see some metal isn't it right this is the hole you can see small small metal because it is not perfectly smooth so these are birds metal chips it must be clear the bird or the swarf we need to clear it regularly why to prevent the tap binding at the bottom of the hole so to prevent tap binding you need to clean it off clear it off so spark erosion is a removal procedure Now what about the external threads? So to cut external threads, so far we have seen the internal threads, to cut the external threads we will be using die. So this is the die, how it looks like. And this is the die stock. So the die can be attached to the die stock. Now you can see here, the die has got some split end, isn't it? The end is cut. 
and then you have got this screws that means i have always got a a possibility to squeeze it right and because i have got a possibility of squeezing it because of the split that means the internal portion the diameter i can always increase or decrease its in in size yes or no so depending on the size of the shank where i need to uh cut the threads depending on the diameter i need to i need to have a situation where the die can be adjustable so the thread could be right hand or left hand it is made using again hard and tempered steel again it has flute and again you will be rotating it in the similar manner turning and twisting turning and twisting changing the direction die disc within the small diameter range have a standard outside diameter which allows the range of dies with different internal sizes to be used with the same standard stock with the same standard stock we can use different sizes and that is why we have got this screw okay the disc are split to allow for a degree of adjustment to the depth of the thread being cut so you need to remember this the purpose of this split both external thread cutting is common it is necessary to obtain a suitable length of rod the diameter which is equivalent to the major diameter so remember in case of tap it was the minor diameter whereas now in case of die it is the major diameter remember these two difference do we need to also ensure that we use the correct type by type i means either the imperial type or the metric type and they are not compatible under size rod will be loose and if it is oversized will be too tight normal and natural that's what our intuition says if the rod is undersized it will be loose if it is oversized it will be uh, very tight the die should be placed in the stock with the tapered thread away from the shoulder of the split aligned with the center adjusting screw what exactly it means the die should be placed in the stock we have got the die we have got the stock so place the die into the stock if it has got a tapered threads away from the shoulder and the split aligned with the center adjusting screw so quite natural the split should be adjusted with respect to the center adjusting screw isn't it right so the split must be adjusted with the center adjusting screw and then this is the shoulder this portion is the shoulder this is the neck a normal you know our body the extended portion is shoulder isn't it so even here also the extended portion is shoulder so it must be spaced away from the shoulder 
tapered thread away from the shoulder so the procedure is slightly slackening the outer screw and then tightening the center screw we need to ensure that the die remains square to the rod that means it must not be tilted square to the rod If, you are, if it is too tight in that case again you need to adjust the center screw and the outer screw we need to repair it as long as we are not satisfied as the internal tap thread is not adjustable the internal thread should not be cut first so remember the internal threads are not adjustable it is the external threads which are adjusted this is very important point because we cannot adjust the internal threads so cut the internal thread first and taking the internal thread as reference you cut the external thread because to certain degree we can adjust the external threads next is screwdriver so screwdriver basically what are the two types of head you will find either the head will be like blade type isn't it or will have some sort some sort of a cross so either it will be blade or it will be cross blade screwdriver also known as csd common screwdriver most commonly used it is made using high carbon steel or alloy steel and the handle it could be plastic it could be wood it could be composite the end of the blade is ground ground means the past participle from of grind we grind it quite naturally we need to grind it isn't it if it is made of high carbon steel we need to do the you know, heating uh, heat treatment and then followed by the tempering operation so these are not important what it is essential for you to know is how they are identified they are identified by their length and the type so they are identified by the length of the blade or by the type we have seen that they have, we have got two different types the the plane and the cross point and they are also identified in terms of the length of the blade the length available from 1.5 inch to 12 inch although sometimes some special screwdriver are available with length up to 20 inch correct engagement of the blade with the slot is very important neither it too, should be too small no no not it should be too large the end of the blade this is very important should never be ground to a sharp chisel edge and the blade of the correct thickness and which should always be chosen never grind it to very sharp edge do not do that okay generally generally the engagement i am not sure whether it is given in your book or not so generally the engagement should be 75% now this cross point can further be categorized into different type one is the reed and prince sorry reed and price then philips then we have got posi drive we have got the toxet and we have got the tri tri wing so as per the type of the head in this screw we will be using that particular type of screw driver if it is meant to be used with philips screw driver we will be using the philips screw driver if, if the screw head is meant or designed to be used with reed and price we will be using the reed and price if it is designed for posi drive we will be using the posi drive so we need to use the correct type of screw driver depending on the correct type of head in the screw 
Then there is something called offset screwdriver. Now, it is, I'm not sure whether the diagram is given in your book or not. Sometimes you can see the screwdriver of this type. Yes, this is offset. Maybe in certain places you do not have proper space to, to put in your screwdriver and then try to turn it. Maybe you got some space here. So from that space, because this place is, you know, got something and you can cannot install and you have got a screw, a uh, screw here, which you need to remove. But then this place is blocked and you cannot use a normal screwdriver because there is no place for you to insert this screwdriver. So in this area, what you can do is insert this one. Offset screwdriver. So this offset screwdriver can have, you know, we can have a variable and versatile option with one end having a plane and the other end could be cross point for more versatile operation. Reversible tip screwdriver, these are very common, made in China. You will find a lot of reversible tip screwdriver change. Yes. With hexagonal shank, they allow the shank of the screwdriver to be reversed. The handle is to provide a different tip with the blade at one end and cross point at the other end of the hexagonal shank. Interchangeable, as the name suggests, you can have different type of head, different shape, remove it, insert another one, remove, insert another one, so interchangeable. Okay, up to here, up to here.